I'm just testing things out right now, uh, trying to get, uh, I, I switched stuff around in here to make it more user friendly. So instead of going pointing this way like I was, I'm pointing this way, and then you can see, you can see, you know, I, I can hook, you know, if I need to hook a keyboard up or, or whatever, or mic these drums up, you know, the table's right here. You know, you dig what I'm saying to you? So just wanted to get some things done. Hey, y'all, look, I know it's difficult. I know it's difficult for you guys to not have the chat room but unfortunately you know you know youtube made changes if you have less than 25,000 followers you cannot use the chat room if you have less than 1 million views on your channel aggr aggregate views you cannot they, they will not allow you to use the chat room and i think it's messed up but it is what it is you know what i'm saying you digs it is what it is man i don't like it but i accept it you know what i'm saying so you know whatever so but anyway y'all i'm gonna do something real quick uh First of all, I want to wish everybody a happy new year. Uh, hopefully uh, you're in good health. Hopefully this video finds you in good health and strength. I want to talk about uh, New Year's resolutions real quick. New Year's resolutions can work for you if you Write it, write it out, write out what you want to do. Say, well, I want to save up 10 grand next, next year, Ice. Okay, write down how you're going to do it. That's a goal and you want to meet that objective. But it's best to write it out so you, you know, you, you have something to refer to, you digs. So if you're looking to make improvements in your life next year, that's where I would start, okay? I'm gonna talk to y'all real quick about something I saw at Sam's Club two weeks ago. I'm going in Sam's Club, right? And there was this African dude in front of me and then a white woman was in front of him. So I get ready to, you know, how you going Sam's Club in the front of the store and the baskets are right there. So, you know, you go around this little wall and you that's where you can grab your, your, your basket. Well, there was one sitting out that somebody had just pushed over there. And it was closer to the door. And so the African dude, first of all, he spoke to the woman. Then he went and grabbed the basket and then gave it to her. And I was looking at him, you know, I was looking at her real crazy and then i was looking at him side eyed i said and i said it out loud i said man you african i'm like look at this fool man these africans up here man they the most butt kissing individual they worse than american black folks they worse than us when it comes to butt kissing you digs Anyway, uh, make sure next year you set some goals and objectives. Write them out, maybe put it on the wall, and that way you can refer to it, okay? It's just, it's just one of those things that I think is, is it makes it, makes things a lot more, uh, beneficial to you because you know i get a lot of brothers and sisters that say ice i want to do xyz and i'll be like i'm like how you gonna go about doing that 
And it's usually some lofty goal that they cannot meet, which could cause some mental health issues because, you know, if they don't meet that objective, you're going to be depressed temporarily. Y'all see how that works? So if you are going to try and make 2022 a better year, I would highly suggest you go ahead and make that happen because if you don't, here's, here's what I've learned. Writing it out and referring to it on a daily basis, you know what it does? It keeps that thought affixed in your mind. And you'll be like, damn, son, uh, I think I can do this. But make sure it's a goal you know you can meet with the resources you already have. Some people think starting a business is some kind of lofty feet and it's not i tell guys hey they like you know i would hire you ice as a business consultant because i know you got an mba but i don't have the money to pay you and i'm like i be telling people on this this podcast the ice man show podcast that I am open to working with you. I, I've had guys that contacted me say, Ice, I can't afford that. And I'm like, well, let's work. Let's let's meet in the middle somewhere. And we finally agreed on, on, a, on a cost. And they were like, cool, man. They were, they were ecstatic. So the thing I want to wanna um wanna say to you guys is. Set some goals for yourself. If things didn't work, go right for you in 2021, make 2022 a better year. Okay? Make 2021 a better year. And you can do that. I'm telling you, you can do that. You can make it happen. But nothing's going to happen if you just keep talking about in your mind, Hey, man, I'm going to go ahead and do X, Y, Z. I'll give you an example. Maybe I can use. Ooh. When I set out to learn how to play other instruments, I already knew how to play keyboards because I I got, I got classically trained, but I didn't, I couldn't play the drums or the guitar. Well, the car, guitar, I'm, I'm not that good. Bass, I can fake it, depending on the bass line. Drums, I'm okay. I'm not great, I'm okay. The way I learned was at the pace that I was at and sometimes I was disappointed because I go to guitar center and get on the drums and start playing and I realized maybe I haven't touched the drum set or drumsticks in seven eight ten years so I was rusty as hell so when I got this drum set I, I came I used to come down here and practice before I start making up beats and what I'm telling you is I took it one step at a time. Like I said, so, and I'm impatient. I'm the most impatient person on the earth. But I had to swallow my pride and be humble to get on there and play as good as I can play. Okay? I mean, I, I play good enough for a studio session. But I, I'm not comfortable playing live and being the, the drummer for a band. No, I ain't trying that, not yet. 
I set goals. I used to couldn't, I used to couldn't uh, uh, do drum rolls. Now I can because I kept working at it and I finally was able to make it, make it, make, make it pop off. So I guess what I'm saying, brothers and sisters, is be motivated, but love whatever it is you're trying to do. Very few of us have jobs we like. It is what it is. So how do you get out of that? Well, you start stacking your cash. 2022, if you haven't saved any money, start in 2022. Start putting some money aside. I have, the, there's an app called Acorns. And what it does, if you if you attach your debt, one of your debit cards to that app, every time you spend it, you and you set how much you take out. I got mine set at five, five, no, ten dollars and twenty dollars. And I've done, I've been doing that for shoot, it's gotta be a well over a year. Might even be two years. And the amount of money that I've I've amassed in, in that account, uh, I was really surprised it was that much money in there. Now I'm, you know. I'm almost 60 years old. So right now I can draw that money out as retirement, but I'm not going to do it. I'm still going to wait. I'm still going to wait because I want to, I want to try to maybe wait till I'm 60. God willing. Set goals for yourself. First of all, you got to love yourself. A lot of brothers and sisters don't love themselves. And a lot of it's tied to how you, you were raised, who raised you, what was your childhood like. Remember, everybody has had some level of trauma during their childhood that they wish they could undo. Okay? but you cannot allow those people and your trauma to stop you. Get, get, go get psychotherapy. If you have medical benefits, go over eat grief and they got, they got grief and loss counselors. They got psychotherapy counselors. They got uh, general counselors. They got marriage and family therapists. They got all kinds. They got psychologists, psychiatrists, doctors, especially if you, you're going to need some medications temporarily or permanently. What I'm saying is, Black folks, we ain't, we ain't too keen on going, going to doctors and, 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 and clinicians and the like. But that's something we got to learn how to do. And don't, uh, don't hesitate. Now, I'm I'm a former psychotherapist. I'm not licensed. So I can't diagnose and I can't treat you. But as a life coach and a dating coach, I can work on specific issues that are holding you back. Okay? And I don't charge that much money. Go to asktheiceman.com and check out my packages. If you want to do, you know, if you, if you, you know, I think I have it weekly, monthly, and yearly. If you go yearly, you save a lot, a lot of money. Okay. Don't suffer in silence, black man, black woman. Don't suffer in silence. You don't have to. There's help right here. Well, I'm gonna give that black man no money. Well, but you would rather give Honky McGee your money. We gotta get off that too. 
let 2022 be the year you start supporting black owned businesses, putting your ego and your self hating aside and look at the bigger picture. As black people, we don't look at the bigger picture. We only look at what we was at the end of our noses. That's what we can. That's what we concern ourselves with, and that's why we don't get goals that might take a month, a week, a year, a few weeks, a month, a year. We we don't want to think that far out because in our minds, we're like. Ice, I can't, I can't, I can't set goals and objectives because I'm just not that kind of person. We'll learn how to be that person because I had to learn to. Again, I'm very impatient, but at the same time, I understand that some things are going to take some time. I'm having issues with Pro Tools on on here, so I'm not able. You can hear the instrument. You can hear. You can hear it. But it won't, you know, it won't record. So um, I think there's a bug with my operating system on here. So I'm going to have to work that out. But what I'm going to do is go over here to this school, uh, IPR, uh, Institute of uh, Production and Recording. And I'm going to go ahead and go over there and get one of them students and have them come over here. And, and I'll pay them on hourly wage and have them help have them show me what needs to be done. Because with a lot of this equipment, man, this stuff is different than the stuff I worked with back in the 90s. This stuff is more complicated. And it's not easy to just pick up the manual and just read it. Okay? So... That's something that I'm a little irritated about that because I've been spending money. I got to pay a monthly fee and I, I can't even use the software. Black folks, more and more black folks are getting on code. And that's a good thing. More and more black people are getting on code and more and more black folks are coming back home. They're coming back home. They're like, I want to, I want to help my people. Cause I'm, 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 I use my nonprofit to work with inner city kids in every city I live in. I still deal with some nonprofits down there in, uh, down there in San Antonio, but I'm I'm in I'm in Naples now, so I gotta I gotta you know I gotta do I gotta make it do what it do up here because a lot of these North Minneapolis kids and South Minneapolis kids, black kids, man, these parents up here ain't shit. A lot of these parents ain't shit. I'm just gonna say it. I see dirty ass kids at Walmart. I see kids who ain't, I could tell ain't being cared for. And that angers me. But what can I do? But at least if I set something up for them, you know, the, the book bags and the books and the school supplies are fine. That's fine. And the, and the, and the clothes. But I want to do more. And that's why I, I I solicit donations on my podcast because, because legally that's what I'm supposed to do. Okay? I don't have enough money for a billboard to put my nonprofit name up there and to tell people what we what we do and what who we what population we work with. I don't have the money. Personally or in the business account. So this is why what you donate makes a difference. I always wanted to start a nonprofit, but I never had the guts to do it. 
And then finally, I hired an attorney to set up my first nonprofit. Now, the one that I have now, I set that up myself, believe it or not. Uh, what I did is I sat down and I did everything one item at a time. If I didn't understand something, I looked it up on the tax code. Okay? But I got it done. And the thing that I want to stress to you is that if someone like myself is trying to solicit donations from you, don't behave like I'm trying to reach in your pocket and take your money. That's not what this is about. You don't say that about the about Honky McGee getting in your pocket for that for that uh for that cable or that satellite or that car note. Mister 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 uh, Mister White folks, he get his his money on time because you know he'll come over there and take it if you don't pay for it. But when you deal with black folks, I had to check somebody last week. That was that was being disrespectful. And I was like, dude, your money's no good here, man. Your money's no good here anymore. Go somewhere else, dude. I don't even need your money if you're gonna act like that. Now, of course, this guy had more excuses uh than 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 uh than a, a, a cat going to jail. I was just like, man, come on. You better than that. Let 2022 be the year you elevate yourself as a black woman or as a black man. And work on your self-hate. Because if you get a, psych, a psychotherapist that works with you on that, I guarantee if you do the work, do the homework they ask you to do, you're going to break that cycle of self-hate because if you have, if you're a black woman and you have children and you make yourself a single mom, financially, you're going to be behind the eight ball, right? Because you put yourself in that position. You're supposed to marry before you carry. That way you don't end up being a single mom, doing everything yourself. You're doing the job of two people and, and the only benefits you see is child support, which is ghetto alimony. And because of this, this treatment of how you treat your baby daddy, a lot of these young black men are not having children. They're 30 and 40 years old, ain't got one child. And I don't blame them because the stuff that my ex put me through and continue to put me through with my children, it ain't worth it. It's not worth it. Now, true enough, you know, karma's a karma's. Karma's got my ex's address, just like they got, just like Karma got all of our addresses. And trust me, they not gonna skip her house to go to somebody else's. What, it, what you you get, what you get. And if you out here screwing over people, that's gonna be your ass sooner or later. So I ain't worried about. It. I ain't gotta go chase you down or whoop your ass at, at, in the in you know in public parking lot. I ain't got to do that. You ain't worth it. I told my ex a long time ago, you need to stop going around telling people I'm going to kill you. He going to kill me. We've been divorced 20, 20 some years. If I was going to kill her, I would have been done. It. And I told her straight up, I said, your ego going to get you in trouble. Because I said, look, look at it this way, lady. You ain't worth it. You ain't worth me going to jail and prison, whooping off in your ass. I'm like, you, you, you awfully high on yourself. Okay. So if black young black men between the ages of 18 to 34 ain't having children, 
What's going to happen to these women out here, these black women out here? You black women are going to end up not having a pool, a decent pool of men to choose from, which is why no matter how educated black women are, whether they got two, one, two, three, four degrees, they still out here dating uh, Ray Ray and Pookie, sneaking around with him. How many times have you seen a black woman that looked like she got some class and she would somebody that looked like they a D-boy, a dope boy? I don't blame you young brothers for not wanting to have procreate and your money ain't right. Or if your money is right, you just don't want to be in a position where your baby mommy got leverage on you. Okay. And the same thing goes for you. You don't have no babies with no women if you ain't married to them. Because that forces both of y'all to act like y'all got some sense or the court going to step in and take them children out of the home. Now, somebody, so one of my listeners said something to me about adopting. Said, man, I you should, should adopt some of these young brothers and sisters. I've thought about it. Matter of fact, this weekend, I might look online and see what's popping. I mean, I don't need the money. But I'm one of them dudes. I look out for my people because I am my brother's keeper. When I look in the mirror and I ask myself, am I my brother's keeper? You know what my answer is? Yes. I catch a lot of hell for being a caring black man. And some of you, y'all dealing with the same stuff because the people closest to you are the ones that are going to break your heart. I hate to say that, but it is what it is. Take it from an OG. I'm not surprised that a lot of my family members that I used to talk to on a regular basis, I no, I no longer talk to them people. You know why? I'll tell you why. Because them people are not worth my time. They're not doing nothing. They're not doing anything. Yeah, they got jobs. Yeah, they work hard. They doing okay. But they have limited their upward socioeconomic uh, 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 potential. And they're stuck. And, you know, when it, and I've told you guys. As, as a young man, if you stay in a career field and if you're really trying to improve yourself financially, somebody must be at my front door, your income is going to go like this on an incline. See that? These guys, they, they, they reach, they, they, they reach their, uh, the apex of how much money they gonna make. And now it's the older they get, the less money they get. They mess with less money they making. So why I wanna sit around talking to you? And, and all these dudes be lying. All of them lie their ass off. That's another reason why I don't, I don't deal with them Negro. They lie, they Johnny lie a lot. Just lying all the time. Lying on their penises, lying on lying about how much money they make, because I make eighty thousand dollars. And you, 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 and 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 you go by the house, and they got a twenty-year-old car sitting in the driveway, fifteen-year-old car sitting in the sitting in a uh, parking spot at their apartment. Some of these guys ain't never owned a house. Some of these guys just started owning a house in their 50s. I told y'all about my brother. My brother ain't got no house. He can't afford to get no house unless it's in West Dallas. In the hood. He ain't got no, he done blew off all his money, tricking his money off on women who don't like his ass. 
That's an ex these are examples that you guys need to listen to so you don't end up being the old Negro lying. Lying about your job, lying about how much you make, lying about how good the women look that you, that you date. Nobody, I ain't trying to sit around and listen to that bull. I'm done dealing with, with, with dirt, dusty Negroes. I'm done. I'd rather sit over here by myself and, and, and work on finishing the book, my, my second book, The Dayton Bible. I will have that book done by next summer. You can believe that because I'm trying to aim for 300 pages because I want to give people some meat to chew on. This book, my first book, The Game of Life According to the Iceman, Volume 1, you can get this at AskTheIceman.com or you can get it at Amazon. This book is only 168 pages. But I did that purposely because I was going to do The Game of Life According to the Iceman, Volume 2, which was going to go even deeper into white supremacy and how black folks can battle white supremacy and, and still stay on their square and still hold their position as a man or as a woman. You digs? I said I was going to get it done two, two summers ago, didn't I? I said I was going to get it done last summer, didn't I? Still ain't done. But it's going to get done hella high water, you digs. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I love you guys. I love the fact that maybe I can help you some kind of way. We're going to go back to the original Iceman Show podcast where we were doing everything psychotherapy based because I've lost my way. I'm not even going to front. I've lost my way. And that's why I, I notice a lot of people are unsubbing. I didn't start this to, to, to voice my frustrations over the air. And that's what I started doing. And I had to sit back and think, man, I need to get my, I need to get my thing together. I need to get on the good foot. So this is the start of that, ladies and gents. I'm going to ask you when we get done, I want, or you, while, we're, while we're doing this, uh, please share this video with everybody on all your social media platforms. And by all means, if you're not a subscriber, please hit the subscribe button and then hit the notification button. Now, they are shadow banning my channel, but that's okay. I got a second channel called uh, The Iceman Unchained. I, I only got a you know, few, few subscribers over there because I haven't really been putting videos up over there. Only got about five videos for the whole uh, channel. But I'm going to start working that channel too because they ain't, they, ain't, they ain't messed that one up yet. Go send me an email talking about uh, they they uh, 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 they closed my AdSense account. I wasn't earning no money anyway. I wasn't even meeting the hundred dollar threshold. <laughs> okay. I need to be cold as ice and sub zero, but I got to do it in a way that doesn't run people off because that's not what I'm trying to do people I ain't trying to run y'all off but that's what is happening and I and if it, if I've offended anybody on here on my channel I apologize if I've offended you and ran you off give me a second chance we all deserve second chances you will be moved you digs. But ladies and gentlemen, we're ending 2021. Hopefully we can end it on a good note. Uh, if you're going to party, 
do it in one place and make sure you're going to stay the night over there. Don't be out here driving around drunk, man, or high, or drunk and high. If I, I smoke a little bud, drink me a little drink, I ain't going nowhere. Like my uncle say down there in San Antonio, he said, man, I could just be telling them bras, hey, hey, look, I got plenty of drink over here. I got plenty of food. Come on through. That's the best I can do. Women are impressed. Even if you got three, a uh, small three bedroom, two bathroom house, they know you got good credit. But if you stay, if you my age and you still staying in an apartment, they're gonna be like, hmm, because a lot of these women got their got a house already. Because they know ain't no man gonna buy it for them for whatever reason. One of my one of my life coaching clients that I had about three or four years ago, there was a real timid, this dude was a real timid guy, uh, pretty much he a mama's boy. His parents done punked him out. And one thing I told him, I said, if you're expecting you to change overnight without doing any work. I, this, you're wasting your time and your money hiring me as your life coach. Say, man, black women at work be punking me and this, that, and the third. I said, hey, man, look, you either going to be the shoe or you going to be the gum under the shoe in life it's up to you that's your choice now i know a lot of cats that listen to me got felonies on their record misdemeanors on their record they you know they ain't expunged their record i said su i suggest you do that because that stuff gonna keep coming up every time you go for a job interview every time you go over here to try to get an apartment all that's gonna pop up so the best thing for you to do is expunge your record uh, depending on, you need to check the state law in your, your respective state. I highly suggest you do that. But I have a lot of cats that been, you know, I, I used to be, I got, I got charged with some stuff. I told y'all I used to be in them streets. And I had to grow up. Cause I wasn't getting anywhere. I was out there on them streets, uh, 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 making it do what it do, getting money, stealing. We used to go steal computers, stuff like that. Go sell, go to the pawn shop, and get a, a a pocket full of money. Then we go get some bud and get hot, get some drink and some dank and I got tired of that and I finally elevated my life that's why I'm sitting here I'm not sitting here just because I'm a veteran because I get them emails from cats oh man oh, it's the only reason why you able to you know do what you do and live the way you live is because you a veteran they give you a free lunch every month I'm like dude I don't get no free lunch that money that the VA paid me, man, that ain't that ain't enough to buy soap to wash my ball sack. That is a pittance compared to what I made when I was working in corporate America. That's why I decided to work for myself because here I ain't got to deal with no racism. I ain't got to deal with no racist. There no racists li live over here, in here. Just me. I ain't gonna put up with that. Some of y'all at your breaking point at your job. What you gonna do about that, man? Are you just gonna sit there and take it with no Vaseline? Or, or are you gonna make some changes? It starts with you. Ain't nothing gonna work 
until it starts with you. And yes, do you run the risk of losing your homies? Yes. Because once you establish yourself outside of that little friendship circle, they're going to start hating on you. Or maybe one is supportive, but the other cat that you hang with, he's hating on you. Well, get rid of him. That's why I don't deal with relatives, because all they do is hate. Hate, 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 hate. The only time I'm going to deal with some haters is when I go to the haters ball. You understand me? Otherwise, I, don't, I ain't dealing with you because you ain't doing nothing. Am I taking a risk of embarrassing myself if stuff like this doesn't work? Yes. I'm willing to make that, make that, take that chance. I'm betting on the Iceman. And I want you to learn to bet on you. When everybody says, "Yeah, hey, Robert, you ain't you ain't about nothing," you know, uh, Lisa, you ain't about nothing. You ain't gonna do nothing. When you hear that it coming in both ears, if you sit there and listen to that, you ain't gonna do nothing. You gotta you gotta tune them people out. I've had relatives tell me, oh, why you want to start a nonprofit? Oh, you, how you going to do that? Don't you need a lawyer? I'm like, man, get out of my face. But what they're really doing, what he, what, haters are really projecting their failure on, onto you. That's what they're really doing. And once I, re, I understood that, some of the stuff I dealt with, with dealing with my parents, dealing with my father, because my father's one of them kind of dudes because he he because he ain't got no self no no self no no self respect or dignity and he's a beta male and he allows people to 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 run over his ass except for me and I ain't trying to run over him but he ain't no leader When you deal with people like that, you've had a mother or a father or both parents telling you you ain't never going to do nothing in life. You prove them wrong. Prove them wrong. God has given you all the tools you need right here in this noggin. This big ass head, this big ass brain and this big ass head that I got, it gets used. Because that's the only thing that really works outside of, you know, my broken up, broken down body. At least my brain is still working. Although I do have a traumatic brain injury, it's not major, but I do have a brain injury. So there's some things I do that's out of character. And I know I ain't used to do that before I served in the military. Haters are going to give you the death penalty. If you say something they don't like, all of a sudden they don't want to talk to you ever again. I got relatives that pull that shit. That's what little children do and girl and women do. Holding a grudge. That's a female trait, not a male trait. Men sit down and say, hey, I said this to you. I did this to you. I'm sorry. You and that other person say, yeah, I, I, I responded. I shouldn't have did. That should have been the bigger man, a bigger woman. I'm sorry. Let's move on. These guys ain't, ain't thinking about doing that. They think they hurting me. You ain't hurting me, dog. You just embarrassing yourself. Because men don't think like that. You think like a woman. So you're going to get these haters in your family, outside your family, your friends, so-called friends. They're going to do everything they can to break you down like dishes. It's up to you to not let them. 
And if that means you got to go get use your benefits at work to go see a psychotherapist, don't be embarrassed. That's the one of the reasons I didn't get no help right off the bat, because I was embarrassed. Oh, man, I'm because I did have people that clown me. My, my own brother clown me. See how self-hating self -hating coons act? They ain't got nothing nice to say to you because they look at themselves and they see failure. If you 58 years old and you living in a two bedroom apartment, you failed. Because you should be a homeowner. I don't care if you get a little ass two bedroom house. At least you got a house. In a yard, in a front front lawn. You did, or get you a condo. If you don't want to deal with that kind of stuff, get you a condo. Although some of these condos are a rip off. I looked at some condos, man. I ain't paying no $350,000 for no three bedroom, two bath uh, 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 townhouse. And it's tiny as hell, like an apartment. Better get on out of here. Excuse me. <clears throat> Better get on out of here with that nonsense. What I'm trying to do here and what I'm going to start doing is being more empathetic with y'all. Because unlike Jason Black, who I think sometimes is cruel and mean, and nasty and disrespectful, which is why he don't show his face. And sometimes I can't listen to some of them videos he puts up there because he's too nasty. The point is everybody can't take being beat the, beat the hell on. Some people can't take it. You got to ease into with some people. You got to ease in there. Say, hey, this is what we need to do. Oh, this is what you're dealing with? Okay. Here's what you need to do. A, B, C, and D. I don't do circular uh, uh, I don't use a circular approach where we sit around and have a, a circle jerk and talk about things, problems that we have. And, and what it is, is a, it's a whining session. And all of us meet males sit around like females whining on Facebook, whining on other social media platforms about a lack of, a lack of uh, upward mob mobility. You blaming everybody else. You blame the ice man. I've had people, I remember when I first started doing these type of video and I stopped doing a lot of comedy video, a lot of cats was like, man, why don't you go back to the old format? I said, dude, I've been doing this 11 years. Do you really think I, I, I don't even think the way I did back then as I do now. You're supposed to grow, not stay the same. So what I'm really getting at, ladies and gents, I'm about, if you present a problem to me as, as, a, as your life coach, I'm going to solve it. I'm going to give you solutions because that's what I was trained to do. I'm a professional. I might get on here at ghetto sometime a little more than I would like to, but don't, 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 don't sweat the technique. I am well trained. Okay. I, I, you, I, how I do life coaching and when I did psychotherapy, when I was a psychotherapist, I use the linear approach, which is 
problem is right here at A, just like a graph you got in, in uh, algebra. Start here. A, the problem's right here. This is my left hand. B is the solution. And between these two points, which are linear, horizontal, I have to ease you over here to get to here where the solution is. See, if we had a circular approach, we just sit around and whine, which is bitch made. That's not, men don't, real men solve their problems or they try to hire somebody to solve their problem. Real men don't sit around and whine and cry. That's what women do. Women create problems men are supposed to solve. Period. Period. And I know a lot of y'all are, men, I, man, these women be playing, man, man, they, I, do you know how bad these women are? I, yes, I do, brother, because I deal with them. And you know what? The women, the women who are the women who are in these other countries, some of them are worse than American women. I'll give you an example. My paid subscribers, I'm, I'm not going to go totally into uh, what I'm doing on Tinder, but I, you guys know I'm on Tinder. And I was talking to a couple of females in the DR. And man, these women think American men are so stupid. They think we stupid. I said, how you gonna come at me like, I said, I'm, I'm, I said, look, I'm offended. You gonna hit me up for money? Talking about, you know, or, or, or you wanna see my culo? And I'm like, and some of these women are fine as hell. I'm like, man, I, I, no, nah, man, I'm looking for a wife. I ain't looking for no hoe. I could, I could deal with a hoe right here. And then some of them tried to hide it. And I, I, I went off on a couple of them. I said, look, do you, I said, because a lot of them think you ain't never been to the DR. I said, lady, look, I've been to the DR. And I see how nasty you hoes are. I mean, man, I've had 13, 14-year-old girls. I've been a taxi. I had 13, 14-year-old girls try to jump in the car with me. I remember one time I went to a, a restaurant got some man that, that Dominican food is nasty. I don't like their food at all. I went to this restaurant and this dark chocolate sister with a big old round ass was it was like like hey you know she kept you know I mean she didn't she wasn't gonna take no for an answer. So I took her back to the condo, my homeboy's condo that I was I was up in. And made it do what it do. But I mean, she was on me. She was on me like stink, stink on doo doo. Because the, them people ain't got no welfare over there. And almost all these women got multiple baby dads. And they get mad just like American women do when you shun them. I'm like, I'm not looking for somebody with two kids. I said, I might. I, I said, there are exceptions to everything. Would I take a single mom that was bad as hell, had her, had her mind together, had her mind right and her heart right, but she had a kid? I might consider it. Hopefully, I ain't got to give her some act right. You digs? So what I'm saying to you, brothers and sisters, is this. I had to tell some of these women, look, I look, I know, I know y'all. I know, I know how y'all are. Y'all, y'all, as soon as you see an American, he you hitting him up for, for, for some booty, to buy some booty from. I mean, you can't even walk down the street. Americano, Americano. Just like in Rio, down there in Brazil. I don't know how it is now, because I ain't been there. Rio in a minute. 
It's a lot of hoes on Tinder, man. A lot of them got fake titties, fake asses. I mean, some of them are naturally fine as hell, but a lot of them, you could tell they be getting blued out because they always on a yacht and all this. I'm like, I know you ain't rent no yacht just to take these pictures. And I told a couple of them, I said, I said, I, I said, do you work in one of them brothels? How you know we how you know they got brothels? I said they got brothels downtown. Hell, I bone a madam one time. The track is right there in, the, in that front room. And it's real nice. I mean, this ain't no, you know, this ain't no bunny ranch looking shit. These, this, you don't even know it's a brothel. It's so nice outside and inside. But do you go inside? They, it, 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 them things are huge. They got all kind of bedrooms in there. So when I deal with these DR women, see prostitution is legal there. In a lot of these foreign countries, especially in Latin America, almost la every Latin American country, I guarantee there's somewhere where they sell an ass. By the pound. You dig? So. I've had to filter through hundreds of women just to get a couple that I was willing to talk on WhatsApp with them. But some of them showed their ass on that. I mean, you, I'm the kind of guy I learned really quickly. I learned quickly. Oh, this is how it is? Okay, cool, no problem. Not gonna do that again. So I'm hard, I told y'all, you know, I'm cool with these brothers, but I'm hard on a hoe. And rightfully so. I ain't gonna waste my time with a whore. I can get that here. With a cherry on top. I'm tired of hoes. When you get my age, you don't wanna be dealing with hoes. You want something that's gonna last. And that's one of the reasons, and you know, somebody had an excellent quote on Facebook uh, when it came to dating apps and dating websites. And I'm paraphrasing what he wrote. He was one of, one of my friends on, on Facebook. He said, just like I said, and I talked about some of that in here but I purposely left some of it off so I can put that in the Dayton Bible, my second book. Know what I did? Know what he wrote? He said, these people that own these, these companies that own these dating apps and dating websites, they know that, they know that, they know it's, a wor it's worthless. They know it's worthless. Their business model ain't trying to help you. They ain't trying to help you find nobody. That's why a lot of guys say, man, I don't even deal. I don't go on POF no more. I don't go on none of them sites no more, Ice. I'm done with that. I'm trying to, I go to the bars. Like you said, I go to the bars and start hollering. Sometimes I meet somebody, sometimes I don't. Sometimes I meet somebody, get their number, and they start tripping. I got to start all over again, but that's life. As a man, you got to be built for that. If you talk to one woman and you and and she rejects you and and you and you can't sit here and start crying. You got to say, okay, is it me? Is it my clothes? Is it my breath? Is it is it my hair hairstyle? You got to critique yourself. A lot of y'all don't want to self critique because you know you're gonna see stuff you don't like, and y'all think that's negative. No, that presents a, a, an opportunity for you to make changes. 
when I look in the mirror and I see a big old belly hanging over my belt, I'll be like, no, nah, let me get off my ass and start hitting the, hitting, hitting the, hitting the, hitting the, hitting the stationary bike. Cause I ain't going out there. No, man, it was, uh, it was zero degrees the other day, man. It, it was cold as hell. I didn't go out the house for three days. Okay. You got to be built for this, man. A man has to have the emotional or mental fortitude to live on an island by himself. Like, like, that, like that Tom Hanks movie, Cat, Cast Away. Most of y'all wouldn't have survived a day on that island. You would have sat there and cried, said, well, woe is me. But he adapted. Yeah, that's a character. This is a, 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 a fictional character, but it's still a good, it's a good model to, 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 to see how a man reacts to stuff. A man should be ready to pivot at any time. Because if you're sitting in the middle of the sitting on the beach crying and whining, you're not gonna go out and try to find food so you can you know, get some sustenance. You're not going to do that. You, you probably starve to death. All because you ain't built for that. And I'm saying you can rebuild yourself. You can, you can, you can go from a beta male to an alpha male if you really want to. But a lot of you guys don't want to do the work. I, I get people that inquire about my life coaching services. And, and, and the first thing, First, the first, the, how can I, how can I word this? Their approach is fix me. I'm just going to sit here and listen to you. You know, I'm going to just sit here. I ain't going to be a willing participant in this process. And I tell people, I tell all my life coaching clients when we first, when we talk that first time, I tell them. This is not going to work if you're not willing to do any work. I'm, I give, I, I ain't gonna give you no homework assignments right away, but I will give you homework assignments. You got to be willing to do the work. If you're not willing to do the work, I, I, I would advise you to 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 not hire me because I, I want results. I know how I know my worth. I know my training, and I know how good I am. And I know, and I have listeners that's probably sitting here right now listening to me that have, have, their lives have been changed after six months of life coaching with me. They moved out their mama house. They got their own house. Some of them even have bought houses. I didn't see that coming when I first started working with them. So, Is it frustrating for me to go on Tinder and try to find somebody overseas? Yes, because a lot, a lot of the women don't want to come here. They don't want to relocate here. You would think as poor and dirty and dusty as they are, you think they would get tired of the DR. But some of them don't. So, and then, like I said, some of them just, do you have a passport? No. Do you have a visa on your passport? No. Now, most of the women do have a passport that I've talked to, but the few who who don't, the few women that don't have no children, I ain't got no passport. I'm like, are you trying to meet somebody from the DR or are you trying to meet somebody overseas? Because some of them will put on their page, no DR men. It, I'm only talking to men in Europe and in North America which they really, you know, they, they mean the, the, the United States and Canada. Because them, the, like I said, these the, I talked to women in the Philippines, couldn't find nobody down there. And them women, they just nasty down there. I, I kind of was like, now nah, maybe I don't want no Filipino chick because they just seem nasty to me. That's just my, that's my opinion. And and to see how they live, I mean they'll they'll be in a like a shanty, 
with you know you know how you, you know how you had how, how you had that metal that metal that goes like this that you know it comes in sheets and some people use it as fences so you can't see in their backyard they using that as a roof and it's raining in there. And you got five or six people, men and women, mama, daddy, the woman, her children, all of them sleeping in the same damn room. I, ain't, I don't want to bring nobody over here like that. Sorry. But all they want to do is get nickels and dimes out of you. Uh, can you help me? I need some. I need some money. I need some money to buy some leche for my baby. I'm like, you buy your own leche. You better ask that trick. You better ask your international trick to send you some money. And some of these women make a living off uh, off scamming me. I've met African women that do that. I've met Latin American women that do that. And I've met Asian women that do that. Horrible people. That's why I tell God, just going overseas, going, in, going to any country with no strategy, is not going to work. If you don't have an agenda, I have an agenda. I'm either going to smash, that's all I want, or I'm coming at you and I want a relationship. And the women that start playing games, I just delete they, delete their profile, move on, unmatch them, and go on by my business. I'm not wasting no time with you. Plus, you got two kids by three different dudes. Don't think these single moms don't know they done effed up. Even these overseas women. Don't think they don't know they messed up. And it seems like the lower socioeconomic women are the main ones that got a gang of kids. One chick I met was 28 years old and had five kids. And I told her, why are you trying to date? Some of them was even pregnant on their page. How you gonna try to date somebody you, you got? See, that's tacky. That's low class tacky. I mean, a lot of them DR, a lot of them DR people, a lot of DR people are corny as hell. They had this thing where you get off the plane and you got, it's like a soul train line. You got people on this side, people on that side. And, you know, you walking by they, and they start clapping. I said, but y'all are corny as hell. A lot of these women be, be trying to, act, you know, the ones that ain't got no booty, they got their booty poked out. I said, man, you ain't fooling me with that angle. I know the game. I met one chick that's in the military down there and I, I jumped all over her. She was cool as hell. But man, when I found out she had two kids, I cut her off. And she, every now and then she'll send me a message. What happened to you in Spanish? I'm like, ain't nothing. I'm still doing, doing me. You'll get the message after a while. I'm not interested. Once soon as she told me she had two kids, I stopped talking to her. See, ladies, when you sit up here and have babies out of wedlock, had these illegitimate children, see, that's what they used to call them when I was a kid. And, and that's a true characterization of what, what them children are. They're illegitimate. They born outside of a marriage. And I think somebody's a fool to have babies by do every dude you date. And you ain't got no ring. You ain't got nothing. He ain't got no money. You ain't got no money. Now you got to go down there to the county. They ain't even got that over there. I've taught, man, I taught, I met a 37 year old chick. Fine, I mean, straight up down. Straight, I mean, hourglass body, pretty face, ass was ta da. Didn't have no kids. And you know what? You know why? You know why I left that woman alone after a week? Because she started. She was. She was one of these women. She want to tell me 
what her goals and objectives are. I said, I'm not paying for you to go to school. I want to go to America because nothing's happening. Over. This woman, 38 years old, living with her mom. And it, I see a lot of that down there. That's, uh, most of the women look dusty as hell. That's why you got to be careful. Don't let these women play that humble role and, and fool you. You talking to a hoe, a renegade hoe, what, what we used to call it. A renegade hoe is a woman with no pimp. She ain't got no, no sponsorship. She just out here and see women like that. They just throw their coochie up in the air. They don't care who, who catches it. But then when they meet men like you or I, who got some class and, and, and stable money coming in, because one of the things I notice on a lot of these women's profiles, they talk about they looking for somebody that got a job and, and is stable. But then some of them don't want to act right. And I and and going back to that 38-year-old chick, she wrote a long ass diatribe about how she want to come live with me and go to school. I said, look, I, what do I look like? The dormitory at, at University of Minnesota? You just go crash here and, and, and go to school, and I'm just gonna break you off. Man, if you don't get out of here with that. I got angry with her because I'm like, damn, I found somebody fine as hell and no kids. But that woman was crazy as cat shit. I mean, she was nutty as hell. She was nuttier than a payday. Candy bar. Just nutty. Now I see why she ain't got no man. You're going you gonna to tell me what you want to do. I want to get a degree so I can get a job. And then when I told her, I said, I'm, I said straight, I'll be, telling, I be tell, straight telling these women just like this. I'm looking for somebody to take care of me. Now, and, and you, huh? well, so you, you want somebody to wait on you? I said, no, that ain't, that, that's not what I'm talking about. I want somebody going to take care of me, period. And you can't do that if you, Rolling all over the Apples, trying to work. One chick was like, I can't wait to get there and get a job. I said, that's up to me. That ain't up to you. You can't even drive. How you going to get there? You damn sure ain't going to want to ride no bus. I, man, look, I man, it be cold as, man, it be cold as a witch's tit out there. I mean, cold. And then when we got that wind chill, that wind. Man, when that polar vortex comes out of uh, northern Canada from the Arctic. Man, them people be standing out there at the bus stop like this. It don't pay, it don't pay to be a failure, people. But I've been there, too. I, I one time, I, you know, I was homeless one time and I was standing at the bus stop waiting for the bus. And you know what? You know what this, this dick wide did? He ran right through the water and all that water bounced on me. I'm already feeling bad because I'm homeless and just wet me all, all that dirty ass water. But I had I had to take that out. I, just, I was so embarrassed. I should have stood stood farther back. Actually, I was farther back, but he he hit that water so hard that it it, it just it looked like a tidal wave came off the street. I've been there. A lot of guys be like, "Oh, Ice, you always done had money." No, I ain't. No, I have it. I was homeless four years, bro. And I would have still, do you know when somebody's homeless and they got mental health issues, 
financial insecurity issues, no job. Because how you going to maintain a job and you, and you on the street? I've been there. The chances of somebody with all that stuff happening for them to get off the street. Do you know most people that are homeless, especially men, it's a 90% failure rate getting off the streets. That's why a lot of times you see more men on the streets than you see women. I, and you know what, man? I was sitting there looking at channel, looking at CBS News last night. Here they go again. These feminists that's in, in Congress, they trying to revive that uh, 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 women disability. Remember that, that, that dis remember during the uh, Obama administration, he passed some old lame law, some old bill that federalized domestic violence. giving them free legal help. See how they do? This is why, this is why we're out there homeless and they ain't. They'll have shelters, women only. The only shelter you can go to is the Salvation Army. And you know what? The Salvation Army gets a billion dollars per year for in donations. Did y'all know that? And every last Every Salvation Army shelter that I've seen that, that takes uh, family, women and children or, or families or just single men, they are, they are the most germ infested, nasty, broken down facilities I've ever seen in my life. I mean, I mean, just where's the money going? Remember when they had all them tornadoes and all that stuff with the Red Cross, hit the Red Cross, Got their hands like cups, and you you know you know what you know what you get from the Red Cross after you done donated half a billion dollars to their nonprofit every year. You get a bottle of water, a cot, and a thin ass green blanket like they like they got in the in in the in the, in the barracks in the military or or in jail. A toss, a thin blanket like this. Then it in a slice of bread. You mean to tell me where's the money going? If all you providing is is cots and and maybe and maybe maybe they might give them a sack lunch. You know, old nasty bologna sandwich with an apple or orange. That's insulting. And a little tiny bag of chips. But they got but they on TV with their hands like cups. Talking about. Donate to the Red Cross, nigga. Yeah, I don't never donate to no get no damn Red Cross, cause I know I know the hustle. They don't they don't they don't spend that money, dog. The Salvation Army and uh and and the Red Cross they don't spend that money. They don't spend that money, dog. I've seen them in action. Handing out little ass eight ounce bottles of water or 12 ounce or 16 ounce bottle of water, a blanket. And now they went from blankets to the uh, aluminum foil uh, uh, blanket type things. You know, that they they got in, you know, they got down there at the border for them illegal aliens trying to break in our country. They giving people that now. And yet they bringing in a billion dollars a year. I, know, I think the Red Cross brings in over a billion. If we have multiple disasters per year, think about all that money they got coming in. Now, what you donate to me, people get help. I'd rather donate to a black nonprofit than give 
uh, Mr. White folks and Mrs. White folks, my money. Like United Way, they're another one. Bringing in hundreds of millions of dollars a year and don't do nothing for nobody. Just like the Urban League. The Urban League uh, was started by some Jewish dudes. And just like uh, the National the National Action Network, the uh, National Inaction Network, uh, Reverend uh, Al Sharpton's old punk ass nonprofit, they don't do nothing for nobody. And you know Al Sharpton gets a lot of corporations that donate money to his nonprofit and and Jesse Jackson's nonprofit, the uh, the Rainbow Coalition in Chicago. They pay uh, Reverend Jackson four hundred thousand a year. If they paying him that much money, they must be bringing in probably thirty, forty, fifty million dollars a year. Don't get it twisted, dog. Don't get it twisted. I don't pay myself because I don't bring in enough money. I don't get a salary from my nonprofit. So those of you who think I'm getting rich, you must highly mistaken, player. It ain't that kind of party. But again, you're projecting your failure and your self-hate on me on to me and you need to stop doing that one thing lastly guys that i want to uh say to you you guys 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 let me say this to you I don't believe in luck. I used to believe it. Luck is superstition. Okay. Listen to that song that Stevie wanted to put out when I was a kid back in the 70s. Mary Superstitious. Man, the, the, the lyrics to that song are, 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 are something else. Because I never really listened to the lyrics until... I was, I was listening to this former preacher. He was on YouTube. He was breaking that song down and applying it to black folks wasting their time serving a, a, a pagan white Jesus and a pagan God. It's paganism. If you believe in things you don't understand, which is religious or, 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 or other superstitious stuff like luck, if you believe in things you don't understand, you will suffer because superstition ain't the way. Stevie's a brilliant brother, man. For him to be blind and have that kind of insight, that's a, it's a funky ass song, but the music is so tight that you don't really pay. I don't. I've never. I mean, I've been listening to that song for forty some years, and I. I was like, I'm sitting up here in my fifties, just now, understanding what they what he was saying in that song. And that's that's some deep. That's some cold lyrics. Get your get out that superstitious. Well, I ain't go cross the path of a black cat. Do you know how many times I've crossed the path of a black cat? Huh? Superstition is born out of insecure Europeans. And remember, if you live in America or you live in the Western Hemisphere, you're living, you're living the life, you live in an in, in adaptation of their lives. See how that works? You're eating a European diet, which is why a lot of us are overweight and obese. In Africa, you didn't eat no bread, but you eating a whole lot of bread because you in America. Because bread, people in Europe make 
was the ones that made bread because they, you know, it was something to fill people up because that's sometimes that's all people got over there until they started, you know, importing slaves. I don't believe in luck. I believe in preparation and opportunities. I don't believe in no damn luck, people. Get off of that. Luck is, 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 is for a leprechaun. Are you a leprechaun? No. Don't believe in luck because a lot of people think this is what this is what few part of part of this luck is what fuels some people into not doing anything because they they want to happen. You know, they think it's just going it's just like social media. Everybody wants to go viral. For what? For clout? Clout chasing? There's so many weak beta males on social media. Jason Black calls it the whinosphere. And that's true. That's, that's truly what it is. A bunch of Negroes sitting around in a circle doing a circle jerk whining not trying to solve any of their problems, just posting stuff about single moms all day, whining about why women don't want them. That's your fault. Don't work that. That's your fault, player. Fix your life. Don't no woman want no failure for a man? These women got jobs out here, dog. When I go, man, the more I go to the VA, the more I see white females working at the at the VA. There used to be there used to be more men working in there than women. But the women get in there, they start hiring all them white women, all their little friends. And and now and that's one of the reasons why the VA sucks. Because you got all these non-caring Caucasian women up in there. And if you black, they really don't give a damn about you. You just another nigga they got to deal with. You dig? I mean, I mean, I want y'all to win because for so long I was losing. I had to admit it. You got grown 50 year old black women on social media want somebody to chase them around or, or, or give them likes. So they on there poking their butt out. That's, I mean, TikTok got so many old ass olds on there shaking their ass. And most of them women got husbands and boyfriends. That's why I don't. I, dude, I don't, I don't pay no attention to none of these funky ass hoes that be on social media, man. I don't pay them no mind. They're a waste of my time. I don't care how fine they are. Yeah, a lot of them are fine, but looks don't mean everything, player. If you, if a woman looks good but she's an asshole, are you really gonna want to be around her? Because that booty is going to play out after a couple of knocks on it. After you smash a couple of times, you're like, man, this is, man, you know, that first time you're going to, you know, you, you're going to bust that good nut and you're going to be like, yeah, oh yeah, she's fine. But after you get used to this woman and find out she's an idiot, she's an idiot and an asshole, you're going to be like, Shh, man, I got to get rid of this hoe. <laughs> okay? I'm telling you from experience. Looks don't mean everything. I ain't saying you that's that's a reason to go get ugly women. At least get you a five and above. But don't take no mess. But getting back to luck, I don't believe in luck, ladies and gentlemen. I believe in preparation. See, when see when you know that luck is a joke and a and superstition. 
You don't sit around waiting for white Jesus to fix your life because you ain't, he ain't going to, look, he don't exist. There was a black Jesus and a black, you have a black God and you were made in his image. Plus, how can Jesus be white and in a Jew living in that part of the world when Caucasians didn't start following Judaism until 7 AD? What does AD mean? After the death of Christ. But most black folks don't think like that. They don't sit down and, okay, this, this don't make no sense. Nah, this don't make no sense, player. You ain't got time. A lot of people working 50, 60 hours a week. They got children. And so that's why the media plays into your fantasies and your emotions. Who go buy this Honda Accord. Then you go down there and, you know, after they get through adding everything on the damn car, you looking at $50,000 for Honda Accord. Paying $600 a month plus $350 a month for insurance. You, don't, you shouldn't get no cut rate insurance. You need to have full coverage. Some finance companies, especially these finance companies, not these banks, a lot of these finance companies, they'll, 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 they'll be like, look, Every time you cancel or every time you your insurance lapse, I get a I get a I get an email. I get a, a letter generated from from DMB telling me you drop your insurance or you drop full coverage and all you got is collision and, and which ain't nothing. But at least it, it won't get your car towed. Although if you if you are illegal alien in California and Arizona, if you are illegal alien and don't have car insurance, that's okay. They don't tow your car. They just let them drive around with no insurance. See, this is kind of stuff we tolerate. See, when you're not a man, you ain't going to stand up and say, hey, man, what the hell y'all doing? You need to cut the check. You need to give me my people, my, my, pe my black folks, you need to give us that check. And quit bull jiving. You can't fight if you ain't got no fight in you. And a lot of you guys ain't got no fight in you. I've had uh, life coaching clients that just... I'm looking at this, this dude and I'm like, man. And these guys, everybody is shitting on them. From their parents... To God, people at work, every everybody that comes in contact with this guy, they crapping on him. That's his fault, though. I don't feel sorry for you. When you know you can fix it, but you ain't willing to do it. I don't feel sorry for you. I don't feel sorry for no man that get know there's help out there, know where to get it, but you choose not to but you want to sit around and have a circle jerk and whine about why women don't want you, which is what that dude, one of these dudes was doing. And I'm like, dude, luck ain't you black folks. There ain't no such thing as luck. Get off that, that superstitions because that stuff, superstitions make you scared. Like my mom just says ridiculous stuff like, you know, turn them lights out. It'll, it'll put your eye out. I'm like, what? I don't even make sense. Have you walking around scared, of, scared to live your life? I used to be real conservative, man. I didn't hardly do anything other than work out and go to work. But after, and yeah, I had women, but I was like, I wasn't fulfilled because I wasn't totally doing what I wanted to do. Okay. 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 
it's some women out here who will ruin your life. Somebody sent me a meme of this real fine black woman. And she ain't got no, no draws. You can tell she ain't got no draws on. And she has a, a t-shirt pulled down like this. And she's like, on the t-shirt it says, this coochie will ruin your life. And I said, and, and you know, if I saw a woman that was wearing something like that in, in, in person, in, in real time, I'd be like, hey, thanks for the tip. <laughs> well, I, I definitely won't be dealing with you. There's so many people that want to leave their career to chance. Like I meet guys that say, Ice, uh, give me some money so I can go to the studio. And I'm like, man, you, you, I said, dude, when I get this thing up and running, if you in Chicago, you want to drive up here, I, yeah, we can do some studio time. I ain't, you know, but you had to give me something. It ain't free, but I ain't, I ain't going to charge you out the ass. And you're going to have to pay me for, for my production. Nothing's free, people. Even information. Information's not free, people. That's why we get less information and white supremacists get all the information. And they make sure when they're talking amongst themselves, when you walk by, they stop talking or they get real low. Because they don't want Negroes to come up off of their information. But you know what? I, I, I've come up off their information. I, I've dealt with Caucasians that spilled, spilled the tea and, told, and put me up on game, on some stuff. But mainly, I, I research. I know how to research and get my information that way. So I am a treasure trove of knowledge that you can tap into if you can catch my podcast. I think I'm going to start doing Tuesday and Thursdays again. Right now, I'm just dealing with paid subscribers because a lot of y'all, a lot of y'all don't support the, don't support the podcast. Now, I'm not talking about money. You don't engage. When we had the chat room, you wouldn't, y'all, you some of y'all won't engage. And I'm like, hey, man, come on. What are you, sleep? So I was like, no, nah, I'm just going to deal with the paid subscribers, man. And they get, I, I do video, I, di I do different videos than I do on, on, the, on the general platform. I do more specific, talk about more specific stuff. Because sometimes they'll get, they'll send me an email and be like, Ice, can you talk about this? Can you talk about the laws of attraction? Now I go do research and then I'll do a video on that because I ain't going to just make no video. I don't know what I'm talking about. I can back up everything I talk about on this podcast. Every last word. I'm not the fake Negro like a lot of cats on YouTube, like goofy, silly beta males on YouTube. But some of y'all would rather deal with them kind of dudes because that's what you are. You rather deal with them than deal with me and, and get your mind right. Louisiana, remember that judge that was using the N word, uh, gratuitous, gratu her and her family using the N word gratuitously in Louisiana. 
says Louisiana judge resigns and apologizes following video with racial slurs. Hey, the chickens are coming home to roost, people. Now, remember, up here, Derek Chauvin went to, went to prison and they about to pile on. He signed. He actually pleaded guilty to civil rights violations. I don't know if those sentences are going to run concurrently, but I'm going to tell you right now, uh, Derek Chauvin, Chauvin got to do about 12 to 15 years before he get parole. And let me tell you something. I'm going to go look online and I, I, I go to the parole. I go up to be like, this dude don't need to be getting out. He need to do his full 22 years. He need to do his full 22 and a half years for what he did. And then you get this and see <laughs> the, the jury that convicted that uh, uh, Brooklyn Center cop, that, that Caucasian female. See, she thought she was slick. Talking about taser, taser. She knew she didn't have no damn taser. See, cops get mad if you don't comply. And see, that young brother probably was like, man, something about to pop off. I'm about to bounce. She purposely pointed that gun right at center mass and shot him right through his heart. That was purposeful. And all that blubbering, she... <laughs> Not one tear. Her eyes was dried in the Mojave Desert. No tears whatsoever. And when they, and you know what? She thought she was going to get off. I could just look at her body language when they read the, read them, read the, uh, them charges that were turned into convictions. She had that look like, oh, I'm about to go home. No, you ain't. And then her, her lawyers are going to be like, they was like, well, uh, uh, Madam Judge, can my client go home for Christmas and, and then report uh, for sentences? She said, nope. Because they know the press is looking. They watching. They know black folks is monitoring these cases. And boy, another three or four brothers been killed. They going to keep doing it. Until we, we say no mas, no more. The chickens are coming home to roost for these white supremacists, but they ain't coming back fast enough. I read something online or heard something online. They said, after doing research, Violence toward black, and then you know they always got to throw Latinos in there. Why I don't know. Attacks on black and blacks and Latinos uh, from the police nationwide has gone down. But they say police violence toward Caucasians has trended up. I was like, see, that's why I pay. See, facts over feelings. I don't deal with feelings no more. See, when I used to believe in white Jesus and Christianity and all that old foolishness, I believed in luck. I hope I can get lucky. Look at the Irish. Once I got out of that line of thinking and took control of my life, my life changed overnight. Because I was in the driver's seat for once. Instead of letting circumstances drive me. Where you are today, I was there at one time. I believed it, I believed that it meant something to, to read that Queen James Bible and to go to church. But every last minister I've ever dealt with was a phony or is a phony, talking my God, God called me to preach. No, he didn't. How, how is God going to call you to preach in a pagan religion?
Come on, man. Facts over feelings. You start looking at facts instead of your emotions. Oh, man, your life going to change overnight. You got to change your paradigm, black man. You ain't got it like everybody else. Everybody in this country hates you, including black women. How, how are you going to deal with that? Some of y'all can't get, can't get out of your own way. You still hurting over something your mom done did to you because she was a single mom and a bum. But you got to face that stuff, man. You can't run from that. Alcohol ain't going to fix it. Weed ain't going to fix it. Meth ain't going to fix it. Cocaine ain't going to fix it. Medic Self-medicating don't fix a damn thing. Because once you sober up the next day, them problems still there. You got to be man enough to look, a woman enough to look at yourself in the mirror and say, I need to make changes because I can't look at myself in the mirror. Fix your life. And if you don't know how to do it, hire a life coach like a life coach like me. Or go use your benefits and go see a psychotherapist. I know the same stuff they know. I'm just not licensed. I worked under another person's license, which you can do legally. But the thing is, people got to pay their ass some money. Because I'm using their license. I'm no joke, people. I don't play. I take what I do seriously. I take what I'm doing right now seriously. And the people that are, are changed, who benefit, I get thank yous. Oh, I, I thank you, man. I appreciate it, man. Man, you, you helped me fix my life, brother. Uh, well, I, I'm doing my job. If I don't intimidate you and piss you off, then I ain't doing my job. Because you got to be uncomfortable in order to make changes. If, it, if everything is baseline and easy, you're going to continue to be mediocre or lower than mediocre. Me mediocre don't cut it in American society no more. That was like 70s and 80s. You can just have a piece of a job and still get a woman. Hell, a car only costs $3,000 brand new. Everything wasn't expensive back then. There's no such thing as luck, only preparation. If you're man or woman enough to look in the mirror and make changes, you well on your way. That, that's, half, that's, that's actually half the battle. The rest of it is you got to do the work. No therapist is going to, no therapist is just going to sit there, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, taking notes, mm-hmm, listening to you. Fill out all your problems. And then they respond whenever they need to. And for the after the end, then when 55 minutes is up, he or she is like, hey, I got another client coming in here. After you. I'll see you later, Mr. Johnson, next week. Next week, 3 p.m., right? Okay, cool. Didn't give you no homework, did he? He didn't give you nothing to work on. The way they train clinicians in, in today, like where I, I got trained, you got to give these people homework. Otherwise, they're just going to leave your office and then. Eh. That's not what I want. I want you to be better. I want you to get well. If you got mental disorders, I want you to get well. I want you to see a psychiatrist and get on medications. Don't be embarrassed. It's better you be on medication and 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 be uh, productive than to than, than to sit up here and suffer in silence. I'm gonna do a uh, uh, I'm gonna do a video later on called uh, "Black Men Cry in the Dark," and I'm gonna get deep, fellas. 
I'm gonna get deep. I'm gonna be talking about trauma. Uh, it's gonna be later on. Cause I'm gonna go up here and watch these national championship games. And after that, about nine o'clock, I'm gonna be on, I'm gonna be online. So come holler at the holler at a player. All right. Well, anyway, y'all, uh go to asktheiceman.com, check out some of my life coaching packages, uh, business plan packages. If you're starting a business and you need some guidance, you need a template, holler at the holler at a player. Go to asktheiceman.com and go to, to the About the Iceman page, all right? And you got all my education listed there, uh, where I was trained, what I got trained in, all you can read, all that's online. And while you're there, go to Add to Cart and get my, my first book, The Game of Life According to the Iceman, Volume 1. You can get it on my website at asktheiceman.com or if you want something more convenient, go to Amazon and get it. Can you dig it? But that this book will get you on your way. If you're lost, there's the first chapter is mental health, psychotherapy. The first chapter, I don't play, dude. I've had people say, man, I read your book about four or five times, dude. And now I understand what you're trying to say. That's humbling. I don't get the big head. No, I got a big head, but I don't get the big head. My, I don't have no ego. And if I do, it's a very small. Because something can happen and knock my ass back to, back to reality. So I'd rather not go there. I'd rather not be out here smelling myself, as my parents used to say. Oh, you smelling yourself, honey? Huh, boy? You don't believe fat meat is greasy. Okay. I ain't trying to hear that. So uh, come holler at a player, the Mad Voodoo Man channel. Our cash app ID is dollar sign the Iceman 1906. And let me say this, uh, according to IRS uh, federal code, they raised the amount that a single person and a couple, if they file it jointly, can uh, itemize on their taxes as a charitable uh, donation. So they raised that. Those of you who make $50,000 or more, you need to have deductions. Don't go, don't sit up here and do that 1040 easy form and then when you get to the end of it and end up owing money because remember the, the trump tax code is still in effect biden ain't changed nothing he ain't changed nothing yeah he talking about trump was such a horrible president So that's why, and that's another reason why I encourage you guys to donate. Now, at 12 midnight, it's going to be 2022. Come on, come on, come on by to asktheiceman.com. Scroll down to the donate button to donate uh, uh, and, 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 and drop something in the till. Whatever you can, you know, whatever you can. But let's get on cold, man. Y'all hear me? Let's stop doing the self-hating black folk stuff. Stop hating on brothers and sisters that are doing better than you. Do you know when I was homeless, I used to walk down the street hoping and wishing. Dirty, funky, carrying everything I own. And people would drive by me and I'd be like, damn, I wish I had that car right now. Because you can't do nothing when you're homeless. You can't get no booty. I mean, although I still did get some booty because I, I kept my cell phone on, but I was lying. I was doing a lot of lying. And uh, now I ain't got a lie. I tell women what I do and I'm proud of what I do. I'm proud of what I do here. But fix your life, man, and look in the mirror and be honest with yourself. Yeah, it hurts. It hurts. I, I, I'm, I've been there. It hurts to look at yourself in the mirror and be like, damn, man, I ain't where I supposed to be. 
But then once you, you, you feel that pain in your chest, the next thing is to find out, find a solution so you can fix your life because you owe it. You, you, are worth, you are worth it and you owe it to yourself. And if you got children, you got to do it for them. You digs? All right, man. If I don't see, if I don't talk to some of y'all before the uh, new year, God bless you. I love you. Stay, uh, stay safe. Don't drive around here in these streets after, after, and really, I don't, I, I advise you not to be off, I advise you be off the street right now. Why? Because fools are out. It, and it, it's snowing, it's snowing like, it's a blizzard right now out there. And people was putting they, putting the pedal to the metal on the freeway. I was like, man, I got to hurry up and get this stuff and get home. Plus, it was cold as hell. I trust that you're going to look out for yourself, but you can't account for the fools that I, I know you can drive. But those fools out there that are drunk and high and impatient, you got to watch out for them. Remember, if they hit you, you're going to be in a world of, of hurt. It might not be your fault, but who wants to be in a hospital after or be at home sore after a car accident? I've been there. It's not luck. Luck doesn't exist. It's about pre preparing. Well, it's about preparation when prep and and and, and uh, uh, getting things done is when opportunity and hard work meet you you look see when you're prepared those those opportunities are going to open up for you but if you're trying to play it safe and not take no risks which a lot of you guys are risk aversive you don't want to take no risk but then you want to sit around and whine about that 15 dollar an hour temp job or you want to sit around and whine about that $15 an hour job at that warehouse that ain't, ain't about nothing. You ain't going to never move up. They, they going to promote Sancho and, and Bob over you. You digs? See, back in my dad's day, you had a lot of kiss-ass black men who would sit up there and train their replacement. I ain't training no replacement. If you telling me you going you going to downsize me and I I got to go over there and train my replacement? I talked to older black men that that's happened to. But those men are such ass kissers and and failures and bums and beta males, they tolerate that. If somebody told me I had to train my replacement, I'll be like, "Dude, I'm done." I'm done. I ain't training no replacement. If you're going to get rid of me anyway, I'm, I'm going to leave on my terms, not yours. But you can prevent that, ladies and gentlemen, by starting your own business and doing your own thing. Take a minute to think about that. All right, I'm going to holler at y'all later on. We're going to do, we're gonna do uh, a lecture. I'm going to do a lecture later on called uh, Why Black Men Cry in the Dark. And I, I, I highly advise, ladies, I highly advise, I'm going to cut down on the cussing. I, ladies, I highly advise you have your, tell your sons to tune in. If you're a man, you need to be on, on, online. I think what I'm going to do is, is set a time, a tentative time of 9 p.m. Central time. All right. All right. Let's get it popping. Remember, you deserve a better life than what you got right now. But you got to take some risks. Holler at your boy.